George Domingo, and Larry Aiken. Good afternoon and welcome to Indian Viewpoint. Uh, we're here again with the co-host of Indian Viewpoint, Larry Aiken, and we also have our special guest that was on at a previous program, uh, uh, Mr. Roger Jourdain. Uh, Roger is the chairman of Red Lake Reservation and has been the chairman of Red <coughs> Lake Reservation for uh, several decades, some 24 years. Um, Larry, as we talked uh, during the last program, we spoke a little bit about Red Lake and uh, some of the things that Roger has been involved with. And again, today we're going to be touching on some of the uh, activities that Roger was involved with and some of the things that Ro uh, Red Lake has done. I think it's tremendous that uh, Roger has agreed to do two shows with us. It shows his dedication to actually get the word out to the Indian people and to let the Indian people know that <coughs> Roger Jordan doesn't hide anything. He's a positive uh, Indian tribal leader, and, and that's, that's one of the things, qualities we look for in leadership today, and, and I think that's in, in enlightening. And, uh, it shows that uh, he does, in fact, care about the things that he does. Today, I think that uh, we're going to concentrate a little bit about uh, some of the incidences that occurred in Red Lake in uh, 1979. Uh, and uh, some of the issues that surrounded that, uh, the chairman of the reservation is going to explain a little bit about his uh, perspectives <coughs> of uh, what had occurred. And we also want to cover some of the history of Red Lake. Uh, uh, Roger, perhaps uh, the first question that I can ask you is a little bit about uh, the treaties uh, that created Red Lake and some of the lands that were ceded and uh, exactly what occurred in terms of creating Red Lake. Uh, what was that process that... Uh, that uh, we had we had gone through. Well, George, <coughs> the creation of a reservation is actually not a creation. It's just identifying the the area that the Indians lived in. Mm -hmm. All the Aboriginal lands, like Red Lake, on that being shown here and right yeah, now. Yeah. All of that there, and what we got left is that small part. The other one is the big line was the 1889 session of lands, and over to the west, as you turn it over to the west, is the uh, 1863 <coughs> treaty that was forced on us by Abraham Lincoln, and we had a treaty uh, made over at Red Lake Falls, and uh, they they recognized the Indian people by virtue of the treaty making. The Indians didn't go out and say, "Let's have a treaty." Mm -hmm. Heck no. Mm -hmm. And uh, they used the missionaries. They were their forerunners, the vanguard, softening up the Indians mm. and preying upon the hereafter, but. As far as the <coughs> Indian people are concerned, we don't believe that the treaties made the reservation. They just cut, it, uh, cut up all the land that we had. Look at this. Look at the map here. Yeah, maybe we can get another of shot of that. Look at the map over here. It's a big shot. And that map shows uh, what the Indians contributed to the formation of the state of Minnesota. Red Lake. Each lake, White Earth, the Sioux down here, and the uh, Winnebago's and everybody else. And over to Lake Superior, Fond du Lac, and Leech Lake, Net Lake. We made a heavy contribution to the formation of the state. I would like to know how much uh, Regan uh, gave here to the formation of the state. I'd like to know what Boscovich gave to the formation of the state, of his ancestors, or Dornberger. How much did they contribute? Now they're trying to extinguish us. But... I don't want to get carried away too much on that subject, but nevertheless, we are proud of the Aboriginal status. All of us have retained our identity. You know, there were times that I would work out for 30-some years in construction, and I met the, the, I met the uh, all contractors and all the union men, and uh, I have had a lot of good uh, working relationship with a few knotheads who were trying to do me in, <laughs> but I overcome all of that. I ignored them because they were stupid. And I... Uh, I was a successful uh, construction man, heavy equipment operator, master mechanic, and a grade foreman, and I was a steward on many jobs. And I saved a lot of white, white operators on these jobs. But the reason why I'm telling you that is that the Indian is always being um, classified. He's a failure. He's an old stereotype, drunken Indian. Heck, I know a lot of drunken white people. That's why we got uh, treatment centers today. You, we got sheriffs that went there, but and others. Now, in my days, <coughs> I felt that I was uh, completely assimilated. I never felt any different. I and my wife, we never felt any different than anybody else. Uh, Sam Newland one time raised a question to my wife in Detroit Lake, a picture for him. We had a 
union there with the state Indian Affairs Commission. He said, how come he says you're prejudiced against us whites? My wife Margaret said, we're not prejudiced. You, you, the newspapers are manufacturing that prejudice. Uh -huh. I feel just like anybody else does. And we had a, quite an argument, and Sam had always been our friend, and I at least I thought he was, but I guess he went on his way somewhere else, like Pat Marsh. Well, being uh, right in the city of Bemidji, you think, my God, you are accepted as another citizen. But invariably, <coughs> that Indian hostility is still lying there all the time, raising a question about your existence in the midst of the Bemidji. I, the reason why I'm using Bemidji is because I live there. I got a mortgage house there because I'm homeless by virtue of Ed Demery and uh, Forrest Gerard and Elma Nitsky's uh, <coughs> handling of the violence that took place at Red Lake. And I'm always reminded that I'm an Indian. Many members what I do. And so uh, I carry my ID card to show that I'm uh, an Indian, proud to carry it around. Uh, like Wendell Kino, the Mescalero Apache, he, he says I'm a French Canadian and he's a wetback in old Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> but let me say something to the Indian people. I don't believe we'll ever have another chance. Perhaps you might have someone. I listen to some of the old timers on your show. But I would like to say something simple. With a known with the Dai Minike Gay David Kawayang, Ma. The Devaque Tar was young, I didn't know anything. You should be with one stranger. You were on Shinabe, you were young. They told me, it's funny, I want to talk with Johnny. We did our work talking in Shinabe. Why we come to ask me to work to ask you? I don't need to dang way to see. Do you wait to go away out of me? She never went out of the mall and even Shinabe. One of them, which came away, he bought it. Oh my goodness, Shinabe. You hit every wire, I kid the hard. You hit the chunk of them, and I eat to get him, and I eat to get him, and I eat. You were scared. Funny, you make quite a man, you were. I said, I got the mark, I I just said very briefly that I'm admonishing, reminding them how we're supposed to stand up and, uh, and represent each other all the time and not be a two faced Indian. When I said, Nizo Dengue, that means two faced Indian. That's the worst kind of an Indian you can have. They're fraud. We don't want any fraudulent Indians. We should banish them from our Indian country. But nevertheless, <coughs> there are many areas we can cover, and we don't have enough time because the media has, is a propaganda machine for the White House and Congress and the white, white nation that, that came over to our, our lands, like, for instance, the debate that was held between Carter and, Ma and uh, Reagan and their closing statements. And uh, I always remember I got it taped. Reagan says, Yes, in this great country of ours, by some divine guidance, we came to this country. And by some divine guidance and right, we settled the wilderness of this great country for freedom. Not once did he acknowledge the original owners of this country who were here by some supernatural divine guidance before his time. Look at Europe right now of the defense budget. 35% of that is held here for the domestic uh, <coughs> defense. 65% goes to the European allies, England. 65% of that, of that over two billion, $200 billion defense money. We're always taking care of those foreign beggars first. Israel, he's being given right now, approximately. $7 million a day, according to the article by James Everest, the former senator, August 29th, that he was interviewed right here. It says that they're paying $7 million a day to carry on their war machine. You can't get 700, you, we can't even get our own Red Lake claims release, which is not controversial. We were awarded that additional compensation by virtue of the Fifth Amendment because our claim attorneys, again, 